I'd like to call the August 6, 2015 meeting of the Sebastian Playing Zoning Commission to order, please. Would you please rise for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance? We have roll call, please, Dory. Mr. Roth? Here. Mr. McManus? Here. Mr. Dodd? Here. Mr. Kizelbosch? Here. Ms. Kottenberg? Here. Here. Mr. Carter? Here. Mr. Alvarez? Here. And Mr. Reyes has not appeared yet. Okay. All right, uh, brief announcements. Mr. Uh, Durr is excused this evening. Uh, Mr. Alvarez will be voting in his place this evening. And Mr. Dodd, if Mr. Reyes doesn't show, then Ms. Uh, uh, Cottenberg. Oh, that's right. All right. He just walked in. Sorry. Okay, um, the next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from the July 16th, 2015 meeting. Does anyone have any um, modifications or changes that they'd like to make to those minutes? If not, I'll uh, entertain a motion approval. I don't see any changes, and if there's no opposition, I'll make a motion they be approved as submitted. Second. I have a motion, second. Any comments? Um, I'll signify by, by saying aye for approval, please. Aye. 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 Uh, opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, we have no public hearings. Uh, we also have no unfinished business, uh, and that takes us to public input. Is there anyone here who would like to address the commission on um, items that are not on the agenda this evening? Say none. Okay. Now let's move on to new business. Um, this is um, a hearing. Uh, it's not a hearing. It's actually a review of an accessory structure. Um, under Land Development Code Section 54275. The first one is located at 881 Patterson Avenue. It's a 25 by 40 detached garage. Uh, would the uh, petitioner please step forward? Um, we've got a packet. Is there any modifications to any of the stuff that was in the packet? Do you know? It's not on. Okay. Uh, my, my name is Paul Otto. I'm with Florida Shores Construction from 757 uh, Sand Lake Road, uh, Orlando, Florida. And uh, we're going to be building this structure for uh, eight, uh, at 881 Patterson Avenue. Um, as far as there are, uh, the, the modifications, uh, I believe we've gone through everything with the building department. And uh, what you have before you is the final product. So do you have any questions? Well, let me let the staff do their presentation. And if anyone has any questions, we'll, we'll call you back up. OK. okay. All right. Would staff like to? Uh... Uh, for this item, uh, Dory's going to give the presentation. And OK. I think what you're asking is what you do have in front of you. Um, as noted in the staff report, we did not have the landscape plan or uh, the uh, required shrubs showing on a plan. Um, and we had noted that we may have that before the meeting, and that is what you do have. Um, okay. I worked with this gentleman, and we did put uh, the 37 required shrubs um, around. As you can see, there's going to be a pad of concrete around the, shed, uh, around the structure. Um, so we felt it would still look nice to have those shrubs along the concrete. Uh, up at the, in front of the driveway, along the back and the sides. Okay. Um, and the owners, the owners have already planted uh, new palm trees. Uh, I think three or four different trees around their house already to add to the existing landscape. Okay. <clears throat> Does anyone have any questions that they'd like to ask? Start with Mr. Uh, yeah, Mr. Bra. Oh. Um, <laughs> I, I have a question. The 
original plan and, and also the one we got tonight doesn't show the shed on would be on the west side of the house and I saw some comment that that either needed to be removed to bring it into compliance is that correct Dory uh, no I'm not aware of any other shed on the property um, is there another shed on the property there is a there is a shed on the west side of the house okay um, I was what not aware be, of it. what would be required to bring that into compliance um, and I was not aware there's another shed we would I would uh, staff would ask that that be made a, as a condition of approval to get the thousand square foot new structure which is their maximum that that uh, existing shed would need to be removed I would simply guess that it was in the vicinity of 10 by uh, maybe 14 feet or maybe 16 feet something like that on the west side of the property it's a nice open lot there but there is a shed that is sitting there I apologize I must have missed it on the aerial also um, but yes with it would the thousand square feet is the max that they can have for accessory structure um, even though they are a little over uh, the 20,000 square feet um, five percent but thousand square feet is max we'll have to have that shed removed the shed okay yeah. I, I'm assuming with a, such a large structure that what's ever in that if it is just a 10 by 14 could be relocated into the new new building okay no other questions Ms. Cadmer no. Mr. Reyes I have a, a few questions uh, mentions a poured concrete drive and parking is that existing already or is that proposed concrete drive and parking are you referring to the addition in the area of the addition that's yes. proposed okay. the concrete slab in that parking is it allowed to be into the easement there all the way to the property line it is uh -huh. um, they used to uh, get sign offs from the utility companies um, the now the homeowners are re required to sign an affidavit that they're aware of that if it, the utility companies need to use that easement that they would have to break up that concrete um, uh, as part of and not the review uh, through this but we have required uh, the surveyor they are having to present figures on impervious what the total impervious is we've got to make sure that they don't from this survey we weren't able to um, calculate the impervious area they've got a 55 percent uh, impervious coverages that they're they can max out at I think they're still going to be okay but we have required to, to check that figure with so much new concrete being added there is a unity of title for this property correct there is not a, a, a formal unity of title when this house was built it was built over the lot line and they did go through the process of uh, abandoning the easement along that line um, there there would not be any way that they could split these lots obviously with the house over at the top but even a chunk of it could not be split off but it was not a formal unity of title so wouldn't the pervious surface be treated as the individual lots uh, I know mean, because you're be... taking up a lot of pervious surface on that on that one lot no it's it's looked as one okay. parcel ID okay I have no other questions thank you okay, Mr. no questions Mr. Case Bank I'm sorry. Yes. <coughs> Mr. Alvarez, I, I passed Fine. you up. Dory, this is double lot. And how many trees required on double lot? 12 trees? Uh, as I noticed, it's definitely, um, with this size lot, it would require 12 trees. However, the house was built in 1989, which was before the current tree code of requiring those 12. And as I noted, it looked like there was about three palm trees, three to four palm trees on there. I think this is a sizable addition to the property that. Um, if you wanted to request a couple more trees to get them closer to compliance uh, but there's nothing in our code that says at this point we can make them plant so that they're up to the 12 trees okay mr carter yes yeah, just one question on uh i take it this is the proposed landscape is that correct Yes, what you have in your packet, it didn't show the required shrubs. Because the structure is over 750 square feet, there's a certain amount of shrubbery that's required, one for every three linear feet, and we did not have that for the packet. Uh, if this had not come in, that would be a condition, but he did bring that in, and it does show the, the, the well, required Well, that was my shrubbery. question, because I don't see the additional 
uh, three to four that um, staff was recommending as far as other type um, full-grown or large trees on there. Uh, no, this one was just to show that the shrubbery had been added. Okay, that was my question. Thank you. The, the, uh, the handwritten notes on this uh, for the 20 to 30 foot tall royal, there's two trees in the back, a couple of date palms in the front. Or have those been added? Is that what was added or is that what was there? Uh, the, yeah, I believe it was what was We was added, there. the, the uh, homeowners added those shrubs, those, okay. bush, those trees. They added those trees? Yeah. So that's in addition to the three that were already on the property? To the best of my recollection, yes. So if we, if we look at those, there's one, two, three, four, five, five plus the three. That, that comes up to eight. Excuse me. Eight. Um, I looked at the site last week and again this afternoon, and the three uh, trees clustered in the front there on the lower right, those are in existence now. Yeah, but uh, what what you're saying is those were added recently. Recently, yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. It okay. could have been, yes. Yeah. I'm just trying to get back to the note from the staff that there were three to four trees now and that they suggested some others. If Assuming that these are recent additions, does that satisfy that, do you think? Um, I had seen, what I had seen from an aerial, so I apologize, was just some palms, the ones in the front and to the side. I didn't see the Royal Ponciana in the back, if that's existing or if that was proposed to be planted. Or this other just says 20 to 30 foot tall. Uh, she, yeah, they, they added those uh, poinciannas in the back. Okay, they're existing, they're planted? Yeah, I, I haven't been out there to verify that, but that's what I've been told. Okay, so uh, assuming that that's what was done, does that satisfy the, the staff's concern about the trees? I would think as long as there's five or six trees, that's working okay. towards compliance. Okay. All right. And we can, uh, when we go out to verify the shrubs, we can verify that there are at least five to six trees on the property. Okay. Okay. Uh, you have anything else, the staff? Any? Does anyone have another question that you'd like to ask? Anything else? I, I'd assume that they would work for uh, with our utility department for the drainage in the front of the, the, the culvert will be added there, correct? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, no one has any other comments. Then I think we're at a point where uh, someone could make a motion if they'd like. I'll make a motion that uh, the site plan for 881 Patterson Avenue, lots 13 and 14, uh, be approved as submitted with the staff verifying the existence of trees as identified on the uh, site plan we received, and also uh, removal of the shed on the west part of the property, west of the house. So that would bring the, the uh, square footage into compliance with the code. Okay, now that's an accessory structure, structure approval, not a site plan approval, right? Yes. Yes, okay, so will you modify that to say accessory structure approval? Yes. Okay, we have a second? Okay. I second it. Okay. Any comments on the motion from anyone? Uh, how high is this structure? Eight foot. Eight foot. Okay. Any other comments? No. no? Uh, I, I believe it's eight foot walls. I, I believe the actual height is going to be approximately Seven foot four to the eave. It's approximately about fifteen overhead. and a half feet. We're talking to the roof ridge line. It's about fifteen and a half feet, based on the plans scaled. Yeah. Yeah. yeah to the to the ridge line of the. Yes. Of the, yeah. Any other comments? Questions? Let's have a roll call, Nora. Mr. McManus? Yes. Mr. Kilzabosch? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Mr. Reyes? Yes. Mr. Roth? Yes. Mr. Carter? Yes. Mr. Dodd? Yes. Motion carried. Uh, thank you. We got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Have a good evening. 
Okay, uh, we're now at an accessory structure review <coughs> for property located at 104 Maltz Avenue. It's an 18 by 36 foot carport. Mr. Davis, would you like to? Uh... I'm Cheryl Davis. I live at 104 Maltz Avenue in Sebastian. I want to put up this carport to uh, kind of protect a motor home that's right now parked on the lot under tall pine trees, getting pelted with pine cones and sap. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to make the thing last a little bit longer. Okay. All right. Um, does the staff have any comments about this one? Uh, this is a request for a 18 by 36 carport. Uh, this is will be put on a uh, place on the corner lot that's uh, been attached to and bought by Mr. Davis and has been unified with a formal doc recorded document. Um, we did include, as you can see, it's going to be a pretty open carport. Um, we included the, uh, some pic pictures of the proposed carport. It will be uh, same roof to match the, the house and any, there's going to be a small amount of trim in the front eave and along the side and that will be also painted to match the house. Um, these two lots have numerous trees, so the tree requirement uh, was not a, a, a hurdle or a problem on, the, on, these, on this request, and staff recommends approval. Okay, now the existing culvert that's noted on the, uh, on the plan, is that the access point? You're going to use that? Is, and how are you going to get back there? Using, yeah, that culvert was there when I bought the lot. Okay. So it's a, okay. It's a metal culvert. <laughs> okay. All right, does anyone have any questions? Question again uh, about trees, numbers of trees. Is they could get credit for pine tree? I don't think so. For pine trees? Yes. Yes, you get credit for pine trees. Pine tree there? Pine tree, yes. Okay. All right, then they have enough. I've got three <laughs> large oak trees that yeah. get multiple tree credits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. There's no. Uh, uh, a, a driveway or rocked area to get access to the building attached to the house no no to the the uh, uh, thing that we're approving no it, it, it does okay no, no it's just just the uh, the carport itself yeah so there's no driveway getting to it or anything okay thank you anybody else I think the answer is question. It's a grassy area, and there is a culvert there. Yeah, all mm right. -hmm. And that's how you plan to access the property is from the the front of Maltz. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's just it's just grass over the culvert. Yes. It's going to stay that way. Mm -hmm. okay. If you're not in and out a lot, it won't matter. <laughs> as long as we don't have a lot of rain. Any other questions? As a staff, anything, anything else they'd like to see? Okay, once again, um, this looks pretty straightforward. I think we're at a point for a motion. Someone would like to make one. I'll make a motion to approve accessory structure for 104 Maltz Avenue as submitted. Do we have a second? Second. Mr. Carter seconded. Any discussion on the motion? None. Let's have a roll call, please, Laura. Mr. Reyes? Yes. Mr. Dodd? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Roth? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Mr. Carter? Yes. Mr. McManus? Yes. Mr. Kizelbosch? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next item on the agenda is a recommendation to City Council. Um, and a review of the capital improvement program, uh, which is the capital um, outlay items uh, for fiscal year 2015-16, anything over $50,000. And we have a presentation by Mr. Kilgore. Good evening. Uh, good to see you all again. I come by once a year, this time of the year, as we're putting together our cap capital program and our city budget. Uh, this is preliminary to going to the City Council, reviewing in more detail with them what's included um, for the uh, capital plan uh, that we'll be doing next week. Um, of course, 
Anything is uh, subject to change between now and the public hearings in September when we do the final approval for next year. We do value any comments or suggestions that you might have. Uh, we think we've got a pretty good plan here that covers most of the important uh, areas that we think the city should be focusing on. So I've given you detailed documents in your packets. Uh, I'm not going to go through all that in detail tonight, uh, but the, uh, the idea by the end of the night, I hope you can consider a motion to recommend the program on forward to the City Council. Of course, staff looks at operational needs and our financial capability on, on designing the projects that we include. We do go through a process with the Parks and Recreation Board, re reviews the program. Uh, as far as the use of the recreation impact fees. The Budget Review Advisory Committee does a, I think, a, a marvelous job in addressing operational types of uh, issues in the budget and the financing capabilities and what the recommendation should be on the millage rate and other, other sources of revenue. In more detail, the capital projects that we've got scheduled for 2016 include general government type uses in the police department. There's 112,000 of audiovisual and computer items, uh, actually 200 and 200,000 basically for police vehicles and 300,000 for a police evidence garage. It will be uh, this program to be constructed next year. Parking and road work are a big part of the budget. Uh, 600000 is set aside for uh, grant projects. A good part of those will be funded through grants is, is our anticipation. And street repaving includes Fossell Avenue uh, is targeted for next year. The following, two year. the following year, we've got Indian River Drive and Barber Street. Um, and I can't think of the year after that at the moment. But we are doing well on our uh, gas tax collections. And we've got a number of street paving. Right, the following year, three years out, will be uh, Bay and Bevan to be resurfaced. There's about 200,000 allocated in, year, in years after that towards street repaving. There's $340,000 towards sidewalk construction and repair work. Tulip Street, uh, the, the major project for the street and the drainage work on Tulip Street will be, uh, is programmed for next year. And there's various expenditures for signs, uh, street lights, striping, and parking that also are funded out of the local option gas tax fund. Efforts towards stormwater include a $170,000 excavator. This will only cost the city a match of about $26,000. That will be mostly funded through grants. $200,000 is a continuation of the ditch maintenance program that we started in this year to really address the uh, the ditch system in, in the city, which um, I guess for many years has, has not been uh, maintained as well as it should have been. Uh, Parks and Recreation, we focused on uh, a bike path for Brushfoot and a Highway US-1 median project for the uh, landscaping. The $100,000 is the total cost or the total allocated, 50,000 of that would also be through grants. We have baseball field lighting is something that's been programmed uh, at the behest of the Parks and Recreation Committee for several years and it's finally moved up to this, this coming year. There's a equipment building scheduled at Barber Street and also other parks and recreation equipment that would be purchased, and $50,000 is allocated towards the paving of the community center parking area. We're doing quite a bit in the cemetery this coming year. We've got $75,000 allocated for a storage building, and 
the uh, columbariums, there'll be an additional structure there that we've got $150,000 scheduled for. In terms of regular facilities maintenance, uh, particularly to City Hall, we'll be looking at the, the re-roofing, uh, painting the building, and working on the parking area here. There's a total of 100000 towards uh, improvements at the Public Works compound. A uh, big item is the golf course. We've got the irrigation system scheduled for next year. That would, it's estimated to be a total project cost of $1.3 million that we will be funding partially with a loan from the building department that has cash that can be maybe put to use and get a better return on their investment and 600000 from the uh, DST monies. We've got a, a grant uh, scheduled for runway markings at the airport. I think $40,000 of that will be funded through the grant and the matching will be $10,000. Building department, we've got a couple of vehicles being replaced and some other office equipment. The total for next year is $5.2 million of the total program of $17.7 million over the next six years. So a substantial amount of uh, dollars will be put forward next year towards capital improvements. We used our normal sources of funding, um, all our special revenue funds as well as the general fund, and as you hopefully understand, there's a lot of uh, grant funds that we are uh, expecting to contribute towards that work. This is a, <clears throat> this is a, <clears throat> excuse me, I lost my voice. You okay? <laughs> <clears throat> Just getting over a bad cold, I'm sorry. Uh. The, uh, the schedule I've given you here shows the major categories and of the $17.7 million, you can see a good part of that is uh, towards parking and road improvements and also stormwater and breaking down the funding sources you can see a good part of the funding um, is not only through grants but also the dst monies that we rely on and hopefully can get renewed um, local options uh, gas taxes are able now to support a lot of the, the road work and street paving needs that we have forecasted um, i pre pre frequently talk to the uh, city engineer about uh, just no end being to the resurfacing needs as uh, roads they, they need to be maintained and uh, we feel like we are trying to are making a good effort to catch up with it but there's always other streets that uh, may come along as as the weather wears on them <clears throat> be glad to take any questions or uh, as I said, take any comments or suggestions that you have uh, on to the City Council or for staff consideration as well. And hope you can make a motion to uh, recommend this to the City Council. Does anybody have any comments? Louise? Um, I just have a question. I, I know there's been discussion about um, maintenance or replacement of canal walls, but I don't see anything that uh, no projection for that even out five years is that yeah, is th it, there's it, been is money just not reacting <laughs> th there's been money uh, allocated this year for an engineering assessment to be done the city council approved that I think probably back in April or so um, so we're waiting to see what what develops from that uh, as to whether there's a city responsibility or if there's some need to to take some other action on it so if it, if it turns out that the city is responsible for that and work has to begin next year, where will the funding come from? We would probably have to look at some type of financing, okay. uh, whether it be some kind of assessments that would be repaid uh, from the property owners. Assessments on the property owners. I mean, it's just too canal. early now to pin down what, I mean, it all depends on this assessment and what our responsibilities are as to what we want to, commit to at this point is to how we go about doing it so uh chair l let me help out on some of these capital items uh, uh, frank Watanabe, the, the city engineer on the seawall assessment 
Uh, we're hoping to have a uh, kind of like a preliminary report to the city council, hopefully the, on the October 26th meeting. Uh, early science right now shows that when we did the assessment, we had an outside consultant, do an, an engineering consultant do the assessment. Uh, the, uh, the number of, uh, you could say, impacted walls is, is a lot less than what we envisioned. Uh, the majority of the walls that we have already been aware of along Joy Haven were most of them. And so the percentage is very low. So you no, know, the issue regarding we, even though when we, we do a, a wall system, you have to do the whole canal. You can't do individual ones. However, because the assessment showing the very low, low percentage, and the engineering assessment showing that the walls are in pretty good and fair shape, uh, we're not in that so-called you know I think the uh, doom and gloom you could say. I think we're in better shape than we thought. And because of that, I think we're in, a, in better shape not to be looking at trying to find large chunks of money or using other when we're in good shape, I think, compared to our roads and our ditches. Okay, but if, if, if you're looking at a five-year capital outlay plan and you know that that's coming along the line, wouldn't it be appropriate to at least have some assessment of that in here so that can be viewed as if, to where the funds could the, come from? If the current situation right now is going to be a council decision, you know, the majority of the walls that we know are impacted are on private property. Okay, I, I understand that, but I'm, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it'll be a council call. It'll, it'll be, you know, it'll be a, okay. a issue regarding, you know, do we want us to then take on, you know, walls yeah. if they're privately owned? I understand it. Yeah, okay. Did you have something you wanted to, yeah, you have something? Yes. Yes, I did. Um, on the uh, long list of the capital projects, the irrigation system at the golf course um, that's a million three. Is that all to be done next year? That is scheduled to begin right away next year. Yes, they're already working on uh, developing the, the plans. Is it so, covers all 18 holes of the golf course? I believe so. About, yeah, this project has already been advertised out for next year's project. It, it will be a design build. A design build means the uh, the the contractor will bring on a design engineer to engineer the irrigation system and then follow up with the construction. It's all 18 holes, and we're hoping to get it to get out hopefully by, you know, as soon as we can sometime in the near future and then get it out. And we hope to have it completed before January. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just keep the water out of the soggy spots, though, please, if you can do that. Another question I had was... Um, I couldn't find it, and it may be in there, uh, funding for railroad crossing improvements. Um, since the paper today indicated AAF was approved for their bond funding, um, if they don't come through with any funds uh, for improving our grade crossings, do we have any anything in the, in the budget? Yeah, we haven't defined that in the capital program, but we have started in the current year setting aside $50,000. Actually, the, the millage increases for this year included or being able to add $50,000 to a, an account just to hold till we see what kind of cost we might have for, you know, it could be legal fees, it could be going towards actual improvements at some point. We've got another 50000 scheduled for next year and then we can see where we go from there as far as where what we progress so doesn't seem like 50,000 would cover very much as far as a, a, a crossing improvement and we have three major ones in the city of Sebastian to look at to but help out again my opinion <laughs> just to update, you are correct uh, the uh, all aboard Florida did receive full bonding for their project so they are now 100% secure in financing so they are moving forward uh, update again I, I have it right here and you can go online their EIS was approved was submitted and approved as of Wednesday you go online so they have a they have a full environmental document cleared so they have their documents cleared they get their money cleared they're gonna move forward we're gonna move forward too we have also su uh, submitted and uh, through FDOT, you go do quiet zones. As soon as we get our 90% 100% plans, I left an email to Rusty Roberts today. We, so, we should be getting them sometime in the near future, in the next couple of weeks. We'll look at our design plans. They should show what we consider to be a seal corridor, quiet zone, quad gates, and all the improvements. And then we'll, we'll submit our notice of intent through FDOT. We secured ourselves when FDOT had money for quiet zones. We did that last year. And we're working with them. We'll work with the, uh, all of our Florida on these quiet zone improvements. But from the reports, the reports do state that the uh, crossings uh, within this corridor will have quad gates, safety improvements, sealed corridors. So that is in the report uh, of the EIS. Uh, so in that situation, I don't think 
at one time this legal challenge of trying to stop the train. I think it's more going to be trying to get the safety improvements for everybody to make sure there's going to be safe crossings. So I think the issue is going to be spending more time on the engineering to make sure we have safe grade crossings. That's why I asked the question. And that would cover the three major crossings in Sebastian. Yeah, we've had discussions early on. Uh, we actually, when we did our quiet zone, we did all five corridors, I mean, uh, crossings, including the ones in the county. Because when you do a, a quiet zone, we submitted it, and we submitted it uh, almost a year ago, uh, you have to identify your quiet zone, and, it's, and we become the primary agency. Uh, the issue regarding who's going to take on the ownership will be in the future, but we want to make sure we sealed our quiet zone and submitted for our grant through FDOT. They had so many million dollars set aside. Only a few cities and only a few counties submitted. We were one. Uh, and so I think we're in a good, good position financially from a grant standpoint and working with all of Florida to make sure that we at least get our five crossings, quiet zone, quad gate, and hopefully sealed. That's great. I know you've got vast experience on that, and we really, in Sebastian, appreciate that. Thank you. Now, you, that, that would include the Roseland and the 510? No, actually, our crossing start way down there at, uh, actually starts at the very far Barber Street, and then we have right there by Dixie over by 99th Street. That's actually in the county. Then we swing on over to the two crossings at 512, and then we have the one over at Maine. Those so we five. don't cover the one in Roseland or the one at uh, 510? Yeah, we did the 510. We don't cover the run, one in Roseland because that's too far out in the county, but we did cover the ones, the, 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 the two uh, on 512 in the county. We, we took care of those. Okay. Good. Well, that's good. So it does not, uh, the 50,000 now is much better perspective. Thank you. Frank, for your insight on that. The good news is, you know, we made sure we submitted our plans had uh, all of our crossings are going to have pedestrian sidewalk crossings. So we're going to, with this project, we'll have pit crossings at all our crossings. That's great. You finished? That was it, yes. Okay, Mr. Samchuk. Thank you. I have um, just a comment. In the is your, your mic on? I can't. Is it sit on? No. Is there a button? There it is. Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> And thank you. Uh, just a comment. The, many people have been watching under Parks and Rec the baseball lighting, and, and thank you for, for um, diligently uh, moving that up as it came up through the years. Uh, people do not realize that the baseball field is a major focal point for the youth. A spring ball gets 450 children in registration, and then you add a, at least one spouse. Uh, and some siblings uh, five days a week. It's a real big part of the community. But more importantly, fall ball really needs those lights. And although it impacts mostly elementary, there are middle school and even some uh, younger high school students um, that respond up there. And uh, it's just uh, been due and it's come up its way through the through the time slot. And so many people are very excited about that. I did have a question on um, curiosity, just the brush foot bike path. Um, I only know of brush foot cutting through Collier Club and then coming out in the section of, um, I just noticed the other day, did you rename that <laughs> road or did it not have a sign and the sign got up when they did the uh, uh, road improvement? Uh, Brushfoot was always there. It was always named Brushfoot. Even though I think people get confused, they consider that to be Airport Drive. Uh -huh. Airport Drive is the one that goes up to the airport. We have actually Airport Drive East, which is on that side. Airport Drive West is actually on the far side off of Roseland Road. Uh, the road that goes off to the uh, golf course and into Collier Club is, has always been called Brushfoot. So is that where the bike path would, I mean, what kind of bike path are you going to have on that? It would be a very short one. It, 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 what we're trying to do is connectivity. No, we ha we're doing improvements right now within that corridor through FAA. We're, we're providing a better road with some uh, sidewalk uh, along the uh, west side, I'm sorry, the east side of Airport Drive uh, to tie that off and make sure, sure we have connectivity to a Collier Club. Even though that's a private development, there are still communities, it's a, it's a residential community of Sebastian, and there are people that want to walk, and they need to have co uh, continuity. Uh, Florida is notoriously... Uh, falling behind on um, pedestrian paths, bike paths, sidewalk. It's, it's, it's been shown over and over with the FDOT study that says we're not good. We need to add as much as we can in areas where we could put in a recreational bike path, which is what we're looking at here uh, on the golf course, which will have a, you know, like a bicycle and pedestrian use. And that way there'll be an access to provide connectivity from Collier Club 
out into onto Main Street. So that's what we're looking to do. But it's not going to go in the gated community. Uh, we're talking with, uh, uh, we'll, we'll go right up to the right away of Collier Club, and then there's be a, like a little 20 or 36 foot section that the uh, development will put in uh, as part of their project to tie the two together. They have sidewalk all the way right, up to right. the gates. There's about a 30 to 40 foot section that's missing within the Collier Club property. They will install that in our discussions early on. This is we provide all this continuity, they'll put that little piece of sidewalk in. Okay, so, so when you said bike path, I thought maybe it was like a recreational bike path. That's that was my question. I just was unsure of what. It, it, what it means is going to be a it's going to be an asphalt trail. Uh, typically, what it is, sidewalk, concrete, pedestrian use, uh, and sidewalks are only used for pedestrians. In Florida, I know people like to use their bikes on it, but they should only be used for pedestrians. Pedestrian and, and bike trail facilities, which are asphalt, which are wider, can be co-shared. And that's why they're made up asphalt. They're slightly wider, and then they're co-shared both by pedestrians and bicycles. So that's going to be made of asphalt. That's why they're called bike paths and bike trails, recreational facilities. Uh, a sidewalk is made for pedestrians only. Thank you. Okay. Anyone down here have any questions? Yes. Uh, yeah, the first, uh, it's comments. The first thing is the uh, landscaping on Federal Highway. There's no way that I'm opposed to that, but it is a Federal Highway. How come the uh, Federal Government money is not involved in that? To, to help out, just to talk about grants, uh, I think uh, uh, Ken glanced over it. You guys need to be aware that city staff, is, I think, has done a great job. Uh, we have submitted uh, over 12 grants. Uh, grants are equaling up to his uh, numbers show 1.6, my show 1.9, but it varies because we're not sure how much we're going to get. We try to go get as much as we can. As of right now, we've, we've received, we won six of those grants. We're 100% right now in grants we submitted. And, and part of that is this US-1 grant, which is the uh, landscaping phase one. We, we received $50,000. Our match was going to be 50, but the plans came out to be about 80,000. So all we need to put out is 30, and they're going to provide the 50. We're looking to do a phase two, and we met with FDOT, and they're highly uh, satisfied with our projects. So we're trying to get the bang for our bucks on grants, and we have gotten, like saying, of the 12 we submitted, six we've received. And so we're doing a, we're doing a very good job getting grants, especially in, in this time period when grants and cities are very challenging. A lot of cities, the, the one I went to FDOT a couple of days ago, the five cities around us, it, and it was all from Fort Lauderdale down to Miami, uh, all five didn't get grants last year, and we did. Uh, we also just found out, you know, we got the Oyster Mat grant through St. John's. Mm -hmm. And or good news, I just found out again, we got the St. John's cot sharing grant to do some new baffle boxes over there by the working waterfront. That was on that list, $140,000. That's going to go to the uh, St. John's governing board next week. So it's another grant we received. That we, they paid 93000 or 96000 and we paid 40 something thousand. So we're, we're, doing the, we're doing a real good job on grants. Good. I have t uh, two other comments. The one was I heard the discussion on the seawalls, and it would strike me that if the seawalls collapsed, it would become a certain amount of an environmental hazard. And as such, wouldn't the St. John's uh, Water District be involved in that financially? We've had already discussions with St. John's, and, and because we were put on notice, I've already, I already had discussions with DEP, DEP regarding airborne asbestos. Uh, the issue is individual home property owners are responsible for their own walls, especially since they're private. Uh, only if the walls are a, a larger corridor, like if they belong to the city or county, then DEP will step in. And, and on my discussions with DEP, if, if the walls fail to the point where it is an impact, the issue would be if it's an impact to the waterway system. Uh, meaning it'll stop the flow of water and, you know, flood the city. One wall, two walls, five walls won't do that. However, to be proactive regarding the potential of asbestos, because if it does fall in, it, it may have it, my plan as a public safety would be within, within a day we'll go out there with our trucks and we'll just bury it with dirt. And this discussion, whether it has to be a wall, whether it should be graded, we have our easement, we have sufficient room, I could slope it, I could put dirt, we're done. So that's the easiest way to fix if a wall collapsed today and they said it may have asbestos to do safety reasons. And I already had discussions with DEP and they said that's the best thing you could do. I'll just fill it with dirt and slope it. Thank you. I, on that question, I really kind of was putting it out that maybe there we could find some money where other where uh, at somewhere else than in the city. My third thing is my wife and I deliver 
Meals on Wheels. And in doing that, we get into a lot of areas of the city that you don't normally go to because you don't have any occasion to. And a lot of the streets are really deteriorating. Now, if they had not, I'm tearing out, if they had a, uh, a layer, three quarter inch layer of asphalt on top of them, at this point, it would appear to me most of them could be saved. Now, if they go much further, they might not. So I was wondering, not this year, but in the future, if possibly a, a larger fund could be made up for, uh, you know, a, a, I, the major streets, uh, that's great, but the secondary streets are the ones that are deteriorating. And it'd be nice if they could be kind of held from deteriorating anymore. Along with that, there are two areas of the city that I think because of uh, possibly economic conditions that uh, those areas would be eligible for our, a federal grant. And the federal grant, if, if uh, the population in that area, their uh, gross incomes fall below a certain level, the grants are available. And just putting it out there. The, to answer your question, uh, there are federal grants. Uh, right now, you know, the new transportation bill has not yet been passed, so we're still on the old ticket. However, you know, we are aware of the situation of the roads. Uh, just to give you an update, I'm right now finishing, in the next month, finishing this year's assessment. Uh, the streets that had uh, water issues are showing uh, more deterioration. So our city manager is 100% correct. We gotta keep our, our roadways clear of water. That's why it goes back to we need to do the ditches first. If we don't clear our ditches and we don't move the water off the roadways, the water will deteriorate the roadways. Uh, if you're not aware of this, you know, Palm Bay just recently had an article that they, they have, like, they have to spend some $300 million to redo all their roads. The reason the majority of that failed in the last 10 years was because they were doing, I consider it to be Band-Aid style asphalting, which is microsurfacing, slurry sealing. They're great. They only last for a few years. However, it doesn't provide any structural support for that road, and you just waste, you're just borrowing time. Our approach was to take care of the roads, to make sure that they're in good shape by taking care of ditches. We have. We're trying to hit our major roads, which we have done so far. Have you seen Fleming Street? We're working on Main. Hopefully, we'll sell next year in the other streets. I'm aware what you're saying. A lot of our local collectors and our local uh, residential streets are showing a lot more wear. Uh, I believe in the near future, we may start looking at some sort of a micro just to make sure that they stay in shape so we can catch up. Uh, but I think we're in a lot better shape than most of our cities who have you know, a good 50 to 80% of their roadways that are falling apart and they need to do reconstruction. Reconstruction is, is a huge hit. It, any street would be close to a million dollars. And that's why you, most cities now are being challenged in that sense. But we are looking at using something like what they call a slurry seal or microsurfacing on roadways. Right, the only thing is repaving is one thing, but losing the base under it is something else. And that's what you try. Okay, my final thing is I wanna thank all the city employees, I think that as a group, you do a marvelous job, mm. and you definitely hold the costs under control. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else count this in? No? No. Okay, I, I just have a couple of comments, too, that I'd like to, to, to bring forward. I, th there's, there's five items on, on uh, the list that all are being funded from discretionary sales tax, which is a great way to fund road repair. And, and like, for example, the working waterfront items, there's $300,000 in discretionary sales tax. Would it not be appropriate to pull that from the CRA and have this discretionary sales tax? I'm just bringing this forward. I'm not asking that you respond to it because I know you, you can't respond to that, okay? Uh, and let, let the discretionary sales tax <laughs> fund be used for road repair. No, um, I'd be glad to address that. Your, your uh, CRA funds are pretty much committed Totally committed because we've started the sewer grant program for a hundred thousand dollars a year. We're putting in there. We have this the sign program. There, there's not a lot of excess capital type monies that we can take out of the CRA at this point. Okay. At least with the revenue stream that we're getting now, based on the values. Yeah. All right. Then the other one, of course, is the the irrigation system at the golf course. Not that I'm questioning the irrigation system, but there's six hundred thousand dollars worth of discretionary sales tax money being spent there in the golf course. Probably that'd be around until 
what, three, three, year 3,000 to generate that much in sales tax, but uh, would that not be more appropriate since we're using building fund for the other 700 to possibly finance that and let golf course revenue pay for it and use that $600,000 for road repair? I, I'm just bringing th these items out. Um, the, the same thing with the uh, with the, the $150,000 that's being spent at the cemetery, you know, would be maybe more appropriate to uh, to finance that and pay for it from cemetery revenue. I know there's not a lot of revenue that comes from cemetery, but to pay for it in that in that way. I, and I understand the CRA is committed. That doesn't necessarily change the fact that the the monies for the working waterfront are more appropriately belong in the CRA than they do in the discretionary sales tax funds, I believe. And that, that money should be used for street repair and stuff that we're going to have to do. So those are just my comments, is all. Would you like a response on the sure, irrigation system? <laughs> the amount of uh, the, the share that's being paid from uh, DST is basically because what we're borrowing from the building fund for its portion, the amount of debt service at a very good rate and without having the financing fees of going to the bank or, or so forth, your golf course cannot afford additional any more debt service than the 700,000 at this point okay. and that that was the reasoning for well how do we make the project work we've got to grab the difference from somewhere and DSD was yeah, I, I kind of usually usually look at things it's like if you can't afford it you can't do it as opposed to if you can't afford it use somebody's tax money to do it but uh, so that's just once again my comments I, the road resurfacing is probably the number one priority for the people that live here right now because that's the thing that's deteriorating and we don't want to get to the point where we're another Palm Bay where all of a sudden somebody comes in and says oh we're gonna to have to raise your millage by X dollars for the next 27 years to pay to rebuild all these roads you know so okay anybody else have any more comments I want to ask a question in yeah. reference to the it has nothing to do with the capital improvement but since the engineer has been doing such a good job explaining everything the bike trails and pedestrian trails, are those shareables with golf carts? And, and on that it, question, it, it's a touchy city, question because I know a lot of a lot of uh, cities have standard, standardized their own. Golf carts are not considered uh, uh, like a bicycle. It's not considered a moving vehicle unless you have it licensed and tagged as a moving vehicle. A golf cart is it's a it's a gray area because it's not a pedestrian, so it's treatment on the sidewalk. Uh, but it's not a vehicle because it doesn't have a tag on it. Bicycles are. Bicycles don't have a tag, but they're considered uh, a vehicle, and they get the, the rights of a vehicle. That's why you can see bike routes, and you're supposed to a bike can't share and take a lane uh, on on any road. A golf cart is is different because, like I say, it's in that gray area. A lot of towns that's created their own policies that says you could make your own uh, bike path or a bike or a golf cart facility. Uh, those are being looked at as as well between I think is I think to be in the future you need to be looking at a multi mode situation for transportation both bit if it's biking pedestrian transit or if it's golf carts uh, I, because of this because I've worked at a project up there in the villages and that's they have uh, everywhere it's a golf cart and it's a good way to reduce gas emissions and carbon monoxide and, uh, and seniors like to use them more and more I, I think more cities are looking at those options. Uh, we haven't done that yet. Right now, they're not considered a motor vehicle unless it's tagged as a motor vehicle and it's pretty much gas driven because to be tagged and to have so much CC's acceleration, you know, you can't be battery driven. It's got to have gas driven typically. A reason I ask, I've seen quite a few golf carts in the city now, so we don't have our own regulations yet, do we? I think they're looked at, we just turn our, I think they turn our heads because it's still a transportation mode. You know, if I start seeing a whole like the villages, you know, where every other vehicle is a golf cart, then we need to take action to make, you know, the crossing safer. Uh, the issue, the challenging issue would be because we have US-1, if that will not allow a golf cart to cross. They consider that to be a non-motorized vehicle. They consider it to be not a pedestrian, and they would not allow a, a golf cart to cross because hmm. they see it as an as, 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 as anomaly. Uh, that's going to be the challenge for us because we have US-1 going up and down the entire city. Uh, so that'll be our b greatest challenge. With, internally, I think we could work it out if we want to look at those options. And like I said, I think as we make it safe, I think they are vehicles of transportation. Uh, I think even with the new style uh, golf cars that have better batteries, they have enough drive to keep up with a, with a bicycle or vehicle. I, I think they're sound and safe. They're not going to flip over on you. I think they're secure enough. They don't have airbags, but you take your own risk when you, you ride a bicycle. 
Uh, so I think those are options we need to look at in the future. Okay, I remember years ago I spoke about greenways and blueways uh, for connectivity in the city. So I was wondering if, the, if those trails are going to be used by golf carts. Thank you. Okay, okay you're welcome. Any other comments? Okay, the motion would be that we recommend to the city council um, that they approve the capital improvement plan. Uh, if anyone would like to make that. I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve, uh, to recommend to the city council this uh, capital improvement budget as submitted. Do I have a second? I second. Okay, we have a motion, second, comments? Do you, do you want to make that as suggested with no changes? Well, I submitted. I submitted. He said as submitted. Okay, I'm yeah. sorry, I didn't hear that. Yeah. Thanks, David. And I, okay. I missed who made the second. I'm sorry. The second. I uh, second it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, no comments. Story roll call. Mr. Roth. Yes. Mr. McManus. Uh, yes. Mr. Kizilbosch. Yes. Mr. Carter. Yes. Mr. Reyes. Yes. Mr. Dodd. Yes. Mr. Alvarez. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, staff matters. Anything else from the staff? None tonight. All right, commissioner's matters. Anyone have anything they'd like to bring up? Mr. Carter. Uh, just a question um, in regards to the maintenance schedule for the trees in front of City Hall. Is there any kind of schedule for that as far as the palms and the large trees out there? They're getting kind of overgrown. It's on our routine parks maintenance, and I know the trees in all of our areas are growing because of the because of the weather uh it is on a routine maintenance schedule they'll be trimmed back they, they will be trimmed back okay thank you anybody else no. yes i want to thank mr watanami for the sidewalks we're in front of the uh cumberland farms finally they're done thank you sir you could thank the county chris Moore. yeah i know i saw them thank you <laughs> appreciate it well you had something to do with it thank you appreciate it okay uh, uh, two items the the last plan that i think I remember us approving for the old fire station on US-1 was going to use part of the existing building and, and remodel that. It looks like they've torn the whole thing down. Has that changed? Uh, the, yes. The, um, the owner or the developer at the time that it came before you for a muscle car shop has sold the property. It actually um, is the Strunk Funeral Home has bought it. And uh, they have, the only permit they have in was just to demolish it. I think they're just going to be grading it down to level. But we understand that there is going to be a site plan coming in um, for some additional parking for the funeral home at this point. Oh, that will okay. definitely come before you. But at this point, it's just demolish the building. Okay. All right. And then one other thing. Um, the landscaping on 512. We have, we have two entry quarters to this city. US-1, which somebody in the city staff does a phenomenal job on because it always looks really good. And we have 512, which looks like we're driving into Oakland, California. <laughs> you know, um, and it, it, we spent, the city spent quite a bit of money, I mean, quite a bit for Sebastian, although it wasn't quite a bit for a lot of places, but quite a bit for a Sebastian, putting some planting areas around a couple of the intersections there. They've mostly died. Uh, they're full of weeds. Nobody maintains them. The county very rarely ever cuts the grass. Every once in a while they come out and trim it a little bit. Um, is there any intent to do something with that or should we just take it all out and instead of making it look bad because it's dying, just make it not there? The uh, little portions by the intersections where we did the improvements, we took on the ownership to maintain that and I'll verify through our parks and recs and we're limited there too in terms of when that rotation is going to come back around to take care of those. I believe their priorities are our parks and then their second priority is the riverfront area as well as US-1 and they do I think a fabulous job in that area. Uh, and you're right, 512 is kind of like low end of this, because everyone assumes it's part of the county. And as we saw, the county are, are not responsive as they should be sometimes. And uh, I'll pass it on to our parks and recs to make sure we take yeah. care of the little well, islands. Well, I mean, to get to the parks, you have to drive down 512. Yeah. And the parks may look good, but 512 makes you not want to go there maybe. Because it really does look, it makes the city, it gives the city a really bad it, image. It's my next target. I mean, once I get the US-1 and the riverfront area uh, with enough uh, grant money to create its own you know 
you can start seeing the improvements. We need to start looking at 512. That's another major east-west corridor, and I agree with you. It, it, it needs major improvements. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it, it primarily it's it's the way most people actually get into Sebastian. Most people don't come down up or down US one. They get into Sebastian through 512, and it it really looks bad. I, uh, I agree. <laughs> yeah. You know, again, I, it's gets back to who's really responsible on things. Now, isn't 512 a county maintained road? It's a county maintained road and a county maintained corridor with the landscape. However, we took on ownership when we took on the grant to do those little pockets by the intersection. Those are ours. Oh, we took on okay. ownership to maintain those. Okay. And now, if we what, what if we create a 512 CRA? Do we take ownership of the maintenance on that? No. It's the roadway itself, just like F. Roadway itself, which yeah, stay like the US same. one. You know, uh, it'd be nice if the county had you no know, money, like like a beautification money, like we're getting for US one, because F. Dot has you know uh, more chunks of money, uh, the county doesn't, uh, and it's. Well, I know R R Route sixty gives a really nice impression when you come off ninety five going into Vero, but, but, but five twelve does not give a very nice impression when. It but sixty is an F. Dot corridor. Right? F. Dot corridor. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that, that's my comment. I, it's, it, it, it looks very bad. And it, it, some, at, at least the places that we're responsible for, which really look bad. It's on my t list to do <laughs> for future grants. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, on the agenda, next item. In, are there any items anyone would like to see put on the next agenda? <clears throat> Say none. We are adjourned.